common mistake a lot of do-it-yourself TV repairmen make when changing capacitors is they assume they can spot a bad capacitor by looking at it. A lot of times you will see a bad cap that's got a bulge on the top, but you can't always go by that. I've had plenty of capacitors that look absolutely flawless, and yet when you test them on the meter they check bad. So if you don't have a good capacitor checker, you're going to miss a lot of potential problems. The other thing I've seen guys do is they'll look at the PC board and they'll see this what appears to be a, a glue-like substance that's oozing out of the capacitor. They'll look at the uh, base of the board here. I don't know if the camera's picking that up. And they assume that comes from the capacitor. That doesn't necessarily come from the capacitor. A lot of times when the manufacturers make these boards, they actually use glue to hold the capacitor in place and then they solder the leads. And that glue tends to brown over time and it'll appear as though it's coming from the capacitor. So don't make that mistake. I'm sure a lot of people have unnecessarily replaced cap capacitors thinking they were bad. Uh, another question I've often been asked is, can you use a different microfarad value? Well, you can, and if you're not a technician, it might not be something you want to guess at. Myself, I can look at a circuit. If I know what circuit the capacitor's in, I can sort of judge whether I can go up a few microfarads. What you can go up on safely is the voltage of the capacitor. In fact, I recommend if you've got a unit that you're working on and you know that the capacitor failed after only one year's of use, and let's say it's uh, calls for a 25 volt capacitor, it's not going to hurt you to go up to a 50 volt capacitor if it'll fit in there. And it'll be a beefier capacitor, it'll last longer. So that's something I'd recommend and I, I do it quite often. Another little trick, and this is something I learned from a friend, hopefully he's right, I've been doing it for years and it's always worked, if you're in a pinch, let's say you need a capacitor that uh, calls for a 200 microfarad capacitor at 25 volts. Maybe all you've got is a couple of hundred microfarad capacitors. You can put them in parallel like this, and it'll actually increase your microfarad value. So that's one thing to consider. On the other hand, you can hook them in series in this manner, and you're going to decrease their microfarad value. I believe it cuts it in half if you were to have two equal value capacitors, like two uh, 100 microfarad capacitors, I think you end up with 50 microfarad in this manner. And this other trick I learned, it's how to make non-polarized capacitors. From what I was told, you can simply wire them up in this manner, the plus to plus or the minus to minus, and supposedly that makes a non-polarized capacitor. Again, I was taught this from somebody else, although I've been doing it for years and I've never had a problem, so... I think it's probably something you can do without having any problems. Um, as far as where you order your capacitors from, that's another major consideration. I used to think uh, I could come out ahead by buying these discount capacitors and they were just as good as any other capacitor and I later found out that wasn't true. In fact, a lot of times I get these brand new capacitors back here, I'd put them on my capacitor meter and I'd find out they had a problem. So if you can find a reputable company like DigiKey, learn to use their website, learn to learn what to look for as far as the operating parameters. You want to make sure that you get a capacitor that can handle the heat. You want to make sure that it's um, you know the correct uh, voltage, the correct microfarad value, and everything, and the correct size. Sometimes size is of the essence when you're dealing with these uh, a lot of these new circuit boards and these LCD TVs. You can't put a big massive capacitor on here and expect to put the cage back on it. Although I have put them in sideways and put extended wires on them in a pinch, so that's something you can get away with at times. Now another little trick I learned is uh, sometimes you'll be checking a path capacitor. You can't always tell where it is. You've got a lot of components bunched together. I'll take a little LED flashlight like this one made by a company called Packlight, and I'll hold it on the back of the circuit board. I guess it's probably hard to see the light coming through, but you can actually see where the component is, and I find that to be extremely helpful. And of course, don't forget to discharge those capacitors if you have any suspicion that they might be charged. These meters here are not cheap. I paid $220 for this meter, and it's well worth every penny of it. In fact, I'd never go with one of those cheaper versions again. Uh, this thing here has made me a lot of money, helped me find a lot of bad caps, but I made the mistake one time of trying to check a capacitor that had a heavy charge on it, and poof, my meter was wrecked. And it wasn't an easy fix either, so I had to fork out another 220 bucks. So those are a few tips there that might help you out. Um, the other thing I like about this meter is it'll test capacitors in circuit. I can simply hold this pair of tweezers up to the back side of the capacitors, and it'll actually give me an indication whether it's bad or good. My old meter, I used to have to unsolder every single capacitor before I checked it. 
So that's something uh, I, that can definitely be an asset. Um, another little tip, there's a gentleman I've been buying case histories from. Now this book to me is worth its weight in gold. There's a gentleman out of Maryland, his name is Mike Danish, and he's been working with 70 other television repairmen to put together this book. What they do is every time they work on a television set, they'll write down what they did to fix it. And if you've been in this industry for a while, one of the things you learn is that a lot of the problems that occur with these TV sets are repetitious. The manufacturers make mistakes because they're humans, and that actually works in our favor. So we'll find the same problem over and over. In fact, just a couple days ago, I looked up a Sony TV in this book, told me what to do. I didn't even have the schematic on it. It told me to place this regulator, this horizontal output transistor, a resistor, and a couple capacitors, and I was good to go. $150 for a $43 book. So I'm going to give this guy a plug. He's really saved my neck. Not only that, he allows people to call him on the telephone that are having problems, and uh, that's worth a lot in itself. I remember calling Sony in the past, and to get technical support, they want big bucks for that. I had to pay $2.99 a minute to talk to their one technician. And I remember this one time, I was like four minutes into the uh, conversation. I'm looking at the clock, and I'm thinking, gee, I just blew 12 bucks, and we haven't even begun to troubleshoot the problem yet. So, um, you know, I, I understand they need to charge a lot of money for that sort of thing, but Mike will call you back on his own dime. Uh, he must have one of those discount lines because uh, that's got to be expensive to do that. But he'll call you back on his own dime many times. I try not to overburden him too much because I realize he's got a lot of people he's helping. But uh, again, um, I highly recommend these books. Uh, check out my website. I'll tell you where to get them. In fact, he said if you if you tell him I sent you, he'll save you a couple bucks on shipping. So uh, well worth it. I, I went to an out, another outfit and bought some service tips thinking that by paying more money I was going to get better tips and I was surprised. I paid $375 for these ones here and I don't use these near as much as I've used my tips. So anyway, hopefully some of the information I left you there is helpful. I'm going to try to put some more of these tips out there on the internet. This is a tough business and we definitely need the help of other people. So stay tuned or subscribe and when I come up with a new video I'll put it out on the net there. Thanks for watching.